about something sort of cool and branch related. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I have to admit that uh, I spent the last two or three years trying to avoid talking about cool and branches <laughs> as, as much as possible. So, uh, so what I'll try to do in the end, there will be some kind of compromise. So, it, so I will give some kind of talk which is, uh, has nothing to do with, 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 with what I originally wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, 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 it will be exactly about cool. Uh, it will be some kind of story type talk, but uh, 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 and cool and branches will appear there, but sort of will not be the central point. Well, uh, the story that Nuno is very strict about this. Well, you know, I could have resisted, but I'm just it's not. Nuno is not strict. I'm just I'm soft. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, okay. Uh, let me start with some very rough idea of what I'm going to talk about. And so, at this point of the talk, the emphasis should be on the, on the word very. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> So suppose that G is some, let's say, uh, uh, so let's say connected reductive group over complex numbers. And uh, in this case, you can attach to it its uh, Langland's dual group. Which is just a group uh, G corresponds to some root datum and uh, G check corresponds to some naturally dual root datum. And uh, so, uh, rough idea coming from physics. And so, I mean, physics would call, I mean, I'm not going to appeal to physics at all, except that I'm sometimes we'll just mention some words from physics. And, and the, the words I want to mention now is uh, S duality for. Boundary conditions in four dimensional Young Mills theory. But again, these words will mean nothing for the purposes of this talk. Uh, 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 I will just mention them, but this is related. So the very rough idea is that uh, uh, given. Hamiltonian uh, G space. Why? Well, again, if you have to be honest, uh, uh, you have to put some additional conditions, additional, actually, I would say conditions and structures, additional, well, some mild additional structures. I will concentrate. On some, in the moment, I'll concentrate on some specific, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, series of examples where uh, these uh, conditions and structures will be automatic. Uh, uh, but maybe I'll mention one structure. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I mean by Hamiltonian G space in a second. Uh, 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 then, uh, but the rough idea is that given Hamiltonian G space Y, you should be able to construct some, uh, again, Hamiltonian. Check space. Why check? And uh, well, and in general, you wouldn't expect this to be an involution, but this should be an involution if y is nice. Uh, and nice actually has some formal definition, but I don't want to uh, just uh, 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 well, put 
quotation marks, uh, uh, and again, maybe in some, in some examples, I'll mention what this condition means, uh, 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 but the right word here to put here is the word hyperspherical. But again, I don't expect you to know what it means, and uh, uh, this is just some condition you can put here. Uh, 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 so, so what I mean by Hamiltonian G space? Well, roughly speaking, so why should be Poisson variety? But let's let's actually for simplicity assume why it's just symplectic variety. Uh, well, sometimes you actually. Sometimes you want to consider singular examples, and then you know I have to be careful about what you mean by symplectic. But in fact, algebraic geometry uh, this is a definition of a single symplectic variety due to Baville. Uh, uh, so and uh, so we have a. Uh, uh, Hamiltonian G action. So everything is algebraic, it's complex algebraic here. Hamiltonian G action, so that means that it the G action so it preserves the symplectic form or preserves the Poisson's, Poisson uh, bracket. And we have the moment map uh, mu from uh, Y to the dual space to the Lie algebra. And so the idea is that there should be some kind of duality on such data. Well, again, mm. definitely it's kind of, if you assume absolutely nothing about Y, then, then it will be a little bit too general. But so one structure that you actually need is, uh, uh, which, which is again sort of coming naturally from mm -hmm. physics, is that you need uh, not just all spaces, but you need uh, uh, so one, one important piece of structure, which actually puts pretty strong conditions on Y, is that uh, there's an action, there's a C star action on Y, which commutes with G. And which sort of uh, uh, such that, let me say like this, the symplectic form, omega, which is the symplectic form, has weight two. Okay, so the real situation I'm going to concentrate on just, I'm actually, uh, well, uh, I will spend about half of my talk uh, so, uh, uh, giving examples of, uh, uh, and so uh, the purpose of giving these examples will be to convince you that this, uh, you know, that, I mean, there are examples which say, for example, thesis predicted, and there are no, this is actually a mathematical construction nowadays, and you can actually compute this mathematical construction in some cases, but I want to sort of first give you a series of specific examples, and the, purp the purpose of giving this series will be to convince you that uh, 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 the, the, the can't be simple construction for this story, because somehow well, this will all behave in an extremely irregular way. But, and then I will actually present the general construction, but the point is that the general construction will be not elementary. Uh, uh, so, but uh, the, uh, we'll concentrate on the situation, that, so we'll actually assume that, so one way to, uh, 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 to, 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 to have a uh, symplectic uh, variety with a system action is to consider a cotangent bundle or something. So I'll assume that I should have x, and let me assume that x is a smooth, and actually I'll also assume a fine. G right here, and um, mm, Y will be T star X. Uh, so we can do actually things more general than that, but somehow for the for today I will just concentrate on this thing. So note that here you actually have a C star action such as symplectic form has weight one, but I don't. I, I, but then automatically you can make it also. Um, you can consider double cover of the action and then. Uh, Make it way two, and way two is the marginal thing you want to have. And actually, y check in this case will also be a fine, but actually, in general, not smooth. Possibly not smooth. Although, I'm not sure that I will actually have time to consider any non smooth examples. Uh, and uh, often, but not always. Often you can write that y check will also be the cotangent bundle of something, of some x check. But again, this is, I mean, this, this, will be, this, is, this is pure luck if it, if, if it happens. So, so, but yeah. we'll, actually, I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples when, when this actually does happen. Uh, 
And uh, so, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, so, so, the, so, so, what I want to the next plan will be to do the following. So to give examples. Uh, second is to discuss relation of this to cool branches of uh, 3D gauge theories to satisfy to satisfy Newton's requirements for this talk. And third, give a general I have at this point is one example I have to solve because uh, this, will, this will determine how many examples I will consider. So, when exactly did I start? Uh, Andreas, a question for you. Sorry. So about the most strict. Um, when, when, am I, when am I supposed organized. to finish? Oh, just, just go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you started about 10 minutes later, that's my view. So, so I mean, like, so sorry, 10, uh, uh, like 10 20, so that means that I have to stop at 10, at 11 10, right? Yes. I'm very bad at the police. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, maybe I should mention also some names. So, this is based on the one hand on a series of my joint work with a lot of people with uh, Hinkelberg, Nakajima, and also I should mention his work in Trotkin, uh, and also this, uh, uh, this is closely related to an ongoing res uh, work in progress uh, of BNC Cicularidis and Ventnetage. Okay, although I probably I didn't, will not have time to discuss what their work is really about. It's a very interesting work, but the question is not written, but uh, they're preparing like a probably 1,000 pages long paper about this for. So, uh, but, uh, 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 but I probably won't have time to discuss it. Okay, let's give you a few examples. Mm -hmm. uh, so, examples. So, to sort of illustrate the irregular behavior of the story. So, the uh, 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 easiest, of, of course, what is the easiest example of, uh, of a variety? Okay, say smooth fine variety with the G actually. So the easiest example is a point. But actually I will can, I will postpone this example for a few minutes because to describe the answer in the case when X is a point, I need, I need to uh, recall some group theoretic construction. Uh, and so I'll first uh, the example for which I uh, I need nothing is the following example. Suppose that G is actually is actually product of some group H with itself also reductive, and uh, x is uh, h, we know, with natural action left of the right action of h in itself, then, uh, 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 well, and then, you know, y is g star h, and then y dual is actually going to be uh, t star of uh, h dual. That's kind of an interesting well, well it's, that's kind of a natural thing. So that's the, that's the only case when it's kind of easy to uh, we have uh, actually in this case x check, which in general doesn't make sense, will make sense. It will just h check itself, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 yes, and so uh, 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 well, and this is in doubt with an action natural action of h check times h check again by left and right translation. Now to consider the next example when 
uh, x is just a point, I need to uh, recall uh, okay, let's make this digression. Well, I want I need a notion of Whitaker reduction. So, so suppose that I have a uh, well, I can do it on G, G side, on G check side, it doesn't matter. So suppose that I have, say, uh, say Y is a Hamiltonian G space. Uh, so uh, then Y, uh, you know, it has moment map, so it's automatically space over G star. And I want to make some reduction of Y, which I'll denote you know, by width G. Uh, y, and that will be a variety which will lead uh, over the joint quotient. I mean, this is a moment. But this, this this thing was not a moment map for anything. This is just this is just a map. Uh, and so so uh, there are two ways how to define this. There's a there's an easy definition and slightly less easy definition. The, uh, the easy definition has the drawback that from that it will not be obvious that this has a Poisson structure. Uh, but uh, uh, so the easy definition is the following. So again, a joint quotient is understood in a kind of uh, stupid sense. This is just uh, you know G is GLM, for example. Then this joint quotient is just C to the n. So this is just sort of categorical quotient. So it's the same as the as the uh, quotient of the dual space of the Cartesian algebra by the wild. So uh, um, so uh, one thing that uh, so we have a map from this space to this space. Uh, so this space, and actually constant has defined an F backwards, which is called constant section. Uh, let me actually call it here, well, K over the image of this map. So I, 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 so this is the image of I. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a section in the sense that it actually goes into not just all elements, but into, into regular elements, so this I, goes from the adjoint quotient to uh, regular elements. So if again, if a G is JLN, then G, G can idea for G is just how this is metered, n by n matrices. And so regular matrices means that, uh, well, I need to define regular matrices. Let's say, say that the centralizer has a, a maximal possible, uh, sorry, minimal possible dimension, which is, uh, uh, in this case, for JLN will be n. But um, again, most people know what regular matrix is. And uh, so it's a section in the sense that, that, the, that this kg star intersects every regular orbit exactly once. And so then this Whitaker reduction of y, uh, uh, this is just, uh, sorry, this is uh, g. Uh, this is just y restricted to the constant section. That's definition number one. Another definition which is equivalent but kind of the fact that they're equivalent is actually some theorem, uh, is the following. Uh, suppose that U inside G is a maximal important subgroup. So for example for GLN that would be strictly a hover yeah. Restricted to pre-image of this over. Uh, no, I mean by K, I, I mean K, K, K is stuff. Okay, this is so in other words, okay, yes, I mean, you can write this pre, uh, pre-image of this on, on the moment. And uh, so, so suppose it makes only one subgroup, but suppose chi from U to the additive group. Uh, this is the generic character. Then uh, the claim is, this Whitaker reduction is the same thing as the Hamiltonian reduction of uh, uh, Y with respect to U with this character. In other words, I take uh, uh, the image of, well, I take the moment map for U. Uh, take the pre-image of chi under this moment map, so that I, I can, I can well, chi, I mean, I can also think, I can take its differential that will be an element in the dual space of the algebra of u, so I will not write differential, and, uh, and then 
they call Shabbat. So that actually shows that the thing is coming to an and then it's kind of not a very good theorem that it's going to say coincide. So, so that's, uh, uh, that thing will actually be, will play an important role in several situations today. And so, uh, 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 okay, I need to erase something probably. So, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, from the second, de second description, how can you see you have a natural map into, to Y? Uh, how what? Well, because the first definition you have an inclusion into Y, right? Uh, yes, but that's kind of, you shouldn't think about this part, part of the structure, yes, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. no, I mean, uh, You don't have a natural inclusion to it. Uh, right, I mean, you, I mean, I don't know how to answer this question, I mean, I mean you, you can, you can, you can recognize a morphism between these two constructions, so once you construct an morphism in particular, it'll, it'll do what you're asking, but somehow, but you, I mean, okay, I don't want, I don't have time to explain how this, this is all kind of, uh, it's also uh, very old. This is, this is all due to constant, and this is like from. This stuff is probably something like 60 years old. Come back to the example when uh, uh, x is a point, and uh, then uh, uh, y check is going to be the Whittaker reduction for g check of the cotangent bundle for g check. So the cotangent bundle of g check has two j check actions left and right. We pick one of them, doesn't matter which one, and then we we we, we do this procedure for. Uh, for uh, for just one of those actions, and then we still left with the other. And uh, this and also goes why, by. Why is the cotangent bundle to the point? Well, yes, I mean, okay. why is always cotangent bundle to x? So this this my intention. So with this x, y. Every time you see x and y, then y is always cotangent bundle to x. Uh, uh, so so you see that this thing is actually not really cotangent bundle to anything, but it goes by the name twisted cotangent bundle. Yeah, so uh, let me maybe do uh, two more examples. Uh, uh, just again, the purpose of those examples is to show that this thing is uh, behaves in a strange way, and then I also mentioned this column branch stuff. So uh, example number three is the following. Suppose that G is the group GLM, uh, sorry, GLM times GLM minus one. And I'll take X to be just GLM. So the idea is that here it has a left action of GLN on itself, and also I have an embedding of GLN minus one into GLN, so I can consider the right action, not, not just of the full GLN, but only the subgroup GLN minus one. It's a strange thing to do, but you know, I can. Uh, uh, so then uh, what will be, uh, well again, Y is always the potential bundle. Uh, so know that if we can see that G to be full GLN times GLN, then, then this is already covered by, uh, 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 by this example. Uh, but somehow we can see that just the same space, but with small, with small, slightly smaller group acting. <coughs> uh, it turns out that in this case, this as dual thing will be completely different. So this is again to show you the re irregular behavior of the story. Uh, well, irregular forms and irregular in the sense that it's kind of hard to guess what's going on. Uh, but once you have a construction, you can actually verify that this is what construction is. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, this example does, th th this example, for example, of physics appears in the work of uh, Gayot and Wheaton from 2009, probably. Uh, so, uh, 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 so then, Y check is actually, well, again, it's a, it's a cotangent 
situation, an X check in this case will be just matrices of size n times n minus 1. So you see it's impossible to guess, and well, again, Y check will be just cotangent bundle to this matrices. And so, so it's impossible to guess that that's. Uh, and again, uh, I said that in nice cases, in, uh, this thing is an involution, and actually in all examples I'm writing down before it, this is, this is, all, this is an involution, so we can, we can start with the other side, and then you can, can go backward. So you can actually ask yourself, why do I consider matrices as exactly of size n times n minus 1? Why can't I consider matrices of some other size? And, uh, uh, and uh, well, and uh, actually, the answer is that you can, and you can, well, but it, uh, it will be slightly complicated to describe, for example, to, to describe what happens uh, uh, for matrices of arbitrary size, but let me actually uh, uh, say what happens for square matrices. And in this case, G will be GLN times GLN. And uh, <coughs> Y check will be against again cotangent cotangent case. It will be T star to the following thing to G lamp times C to the N. Where, where which thing is acted on again by G lamp times G lamp, where one copy of G lamp just acts on by left translations on G lamp, and the other copy of G lamp acts by right translations on G lamp and in the natural way on C. So and in fact this is the answer for n times n matrices when the group is GLM times GLM, but Now, one other thing that I want to maybe mention, and I'm not sure I'll have time to talk about this, but let me just uh, mention this, uh, and uh, 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 that this is, a, this is things which are called more Chicago varieties. So suppose I have fixed some group G. Well, let me work in G check. And suppose I have sigma as a Riemann surface. Uh, of, uh, well, any genus. But if I do have time, I'll only the case of genus 0. But in principle, I can do any genus. And uh, n is some natural number is greater than 0. Then to this uh, Riemann surface, you can think about this n as just uh, I mean, secretly, we, we, we should consider the of n punctures, but nothing will actually depend on the position of these punctures, so it's just the number of punctures will, which will matter. Uh, uh, so then you can consider some, you can, again, more in Pachikawa predicted the existence of some varieties with some very nice properties, uh, depending on sigma and n, so this is some, again, Hamiltonian check to the n, so that's the same n space. And uh, this is supposed to behave uh, nicely with respect to So again, my biggest challenge today is to learn how to erase the board. And so, the, uh, well, I, I think I have time, so let, let me describe the nice property of this uh, kind of variety is that suppose that you yeah, split number n as n1 plus n2 minus 2, I think, and suppose that your surface sigma n, so especially think about sigma with the surface with the n punctures, uh, then uh, suppose they have some other sig surface sigma 1 with n1 punctures and some other sigma surface sigma two with n two punctures of some of well, some three point genera and suppose then we can well you know by like this so this we glue them along one puncture then the number of like this then the idea is that this more touchy can right uh, uh, so it's it's like sort of a tick uh, so it's a sort of like a tick with value in 
Hamiltonian spaces. So this is a so sorry. Uh, this is moved, this move to the upper right. This should uh, for sigma n yeah, should be written the following way. It should write sigma m corresponding to sigma one and n one times this thing for sigma two and n two, and then it should take its Hamiltonian reduction with respect to one copy of your G check. So the, the, this is the copy of the check which corresponds to the, to the puncture along which you glue. So just, uh, well, let's really consider the actual Riemann surfaces. Uh, like this. And so here you have something else and some, some kind of genus. Uh, so you glue them and then sort of, if you think that to, for, to every puncture there corresponds an action of, your, of the group on your variety. Right, yeah? And when you glue them, then you have one action corresponding to this puncture, another action corresponding to this puncture. When you glue them, uh, then you, you take the uh, expected diagonal action corresponding to, the, to this two punctures in which you glue. So that's the final thing. And so what's the relationship to what we discussed? Well, let me do it on for genus zero, which is already interesting. Uh, so it claims that for genus zero, this is this can be obtained by this as duality procedure, which is so far very mysterious. I haven't seen. I just I'm just doing examples. So uh, so if uh, let's say so that sigma is S two, uh, uh, then uh, the point is that <coughs> M S two M is supposed to be the dual of the following thing of the cotangent bundle to g to the power n minus 1. Cool. And again, so I have the g to the power n minus 1, which is naturally acted on by the group g to the n. Uh, and so the way it acts is that you know, n minus 1 copies of g act by sort of, say, left translations from the corresponding corpus of this, th uh, of this thing. And the last remaining uh, nth uh, 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 copy of g acts by diagonal right translations. That's kind of so again, you can sort of deduce from, uh, in, if you want, from from the physics construction that uh, uh, that uh, a priori that that, that 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 should be the so this let me write it, m copy of g at by diagonal right translations. Okay. Oh, so your curve is decorated by some kind of a G bundle? No, 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 no G bundle. Just no. I mean, curve is it's you know it's there's actually almost no curve at all. I mean, like I said, nothing depends on the position of the puncture, so it's sort of it's, it's it depends on the curve in a very silly way. But no, I mean, this is just. I mean, I didn't say how how to construct it. I'm just saying that it's, this is just uh, so far. This is just magic. You know. What is M again? So you repeat. What is what is M? M is some variety that more in the Chicago tells you that it should exist. Okay. Uh, 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 but I will actually sort of, formally speaking, I will construct it today. But, uh, and, and you know, in some simple cases, you can say what it is explicitly. For example, if G is SL2, you can, or G check, let's say, is SL2, uh, you can say explicitly what this variety is when n is less or equal than 4. And when it's greater than 4, then this is some variety which apparently, which you can't have, apparently you can't have any description of it in the sense that it's again of new variety and it has never appeared in mathematics before. So you see, when you say that you, describe, you give an answer to some uh, mathematical objects, it means you describe it in terms of some objects which, you know, have, have been defined by, by some people before before. And so, so this variety is, for example, for, no, I mean, I, I don't think you can describe it, I mean, it's just, it's just some kind of new variety. And, and, and when G, is, G check is SL3, you can define it uh, you can explicitly describe what n is, local, n is local, less local than three, uh, and 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 for general G probably. So the only case when n is equal to two, this variety is always the quotientian bundle to, to G check, and, uh, and uh, which is actually form uh, easily to deduce from this, this property. But uh, but for general G, if n is greater than two, this probably actually no way to describe. It. Just uh, is there I mean, no no elementary way to describe. It. I, I will describe it in some non-elementary. But, uh, 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 but uh. okay, so again, uh, I promised to mention column branches, so 
Well, let me mention them. Uh, so, so the cool, uh, uh, cool and branches stuff. Uh, I will not uh, talk about them, but I'll just say that they kind of can be described in those terms as well. And so, this cool and branches are the following guys. Uh, are, well, first of all, in what situation do you want to uh, talk about them? You want to talk about when you have some kind of three-dimensional n equal four supersymmetric gauge theory, whatever that means. Uh, and uh, 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 so, uh, and uh, for this, there's no classification, but for example, so I shall just say cool branches of 3D. Again, as usual, I say that I'm, I'm going to pronounce some words from physics, but for the purposes of this talk, they're just words, so they mean absolutely nothing. Uh, uh, so, more justificate, more kind of, more explanations of what these words mean can be heard in Justin's lectures. Uh, 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 so, so you, so you can construct. So first of all, you know, it's a gauge theory. Gauge theory means that you have some gauge group G, and so, so G will be gauge group. And uh, well, for some reason we denote it historically by n. This is some representation of G. It's called meta representation. Again, secretly everything should depend on the cotangent bundle to n. But uh, and in this case, somehow one should be able to define some kind of gauge theory with this supersymmetric gauge theory with this kind of matter. And this supersymmetric gauge theory has a modular space of matter, which is a very complicated space, but it has some uh, uh, nice parts of this space, which is called Higgs and Coulomb branch. And the Higgs branch is actually easy to define, so I won't do it. And uh, the, the Coulomb branch, so Coulomb branch of modular space of matter is known by MCGN. This is, again, this is, a, this is just a, mm, well, maybe a singular. symplectic uh, variety with no action of any group. Uh, well, it has some, well, it has a lot of properties and a lot of examples. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so its dimension is always twice the rank of G. And one thing it is in doubt with, it is in doubt with an integrable system going over the adjoint quotient of G. System. So these two properties are consistent because you know this has dimension which is the rank of G. So if it's an integrable system, that means that this has dimension which is twice that. Uh, uh, and so uh, I probably don't have time to talk about the example because I really want to spend maybe some time talking about the construction. So let me just say that what's the relation between this? Well, you know, it's a representation, it's a linear representation, but in particular it's a smoothifying variety with an action of G. So it, it take uh, so you can take x you can take x equal to m and then uh, uh, you you have the corresponding s two well and then you know y equal to two star m and then uh, which is just n plus n star and, uh, and then you have the corresponding y check well expect to have the corresponding y check and then the, uh, how is it related to the Coulomb branch well the claim is that it's just again this with a reduction. And uh, if you remember the definition of the reduction, which is uh, not on the board anymore, uh, uh, then it always has a natural, well, it has a natural map, uh, well, this guy has a natural map to G check star quotient by a joint action of G check, but that's actually canonically the same as G star by the joint action of G. Okay, so I mean, originally I wanted to give you some uh, fun examples of Coulomb branches again to so also to, to relate it to monopoles because there's some nice example in history. And so all kind of monopoles, monopole modular spaces arises from some particular Coulomb branches for some representation, but I think I don't have time for that. Uh, okay, so now let me really sort of briefly give you a crash course on dry dramatic on dramatic stacking dry dramatic stack and explain what it has to do with this. I think I have like 13 minutes. Oh, well.
let's hope it will be enough. Any questions? Um, so the list you've given so far uh, comes from physics. Sorry? The list of examples you've given comes to us from physics. Uh, you mean whether all these examples have appeared in physics? Probably yes. No, I'm, do, the, do these examples answer a mathematical question? Uh, what do you mean? Well, you've given a list of pairs of spaces. Is it a list that was provided by physicists, or is it a list that was provided well, by some mathematical question? No, I think the list, you know, is it a historical question? Yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, as we know very well, history, you know, different people have different pictures of the history in their heads, so. so. <laughs> the longer we live, the more we learn this principle. So, uh, uh, so I think that, uh, I mean, if you ask how, this, how the history, how, it, how it historically happened in my head, then, uh, 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 then, you know, I can probably explain, but, but this, will this will take a long time. Well, it's a motivational question. Like, what if, you know, is this, yeah. Are you trying to, are you trying no, to, um, are you trying to flip cut, are you trying to explain a construction that unifies a lot of examples from well, physics? Or? It's not, okay. For the purposes of this talk, yes. Let's, let's just, for the purposes of this talk, let's decide if this is what we're doing. <clears throat> But, uh, what is the orig physics origin of example one? Because all well, other examples. Example, like, which example? That you just erased. Example one. Example one is pure gauge theory. It's pure gauge theory. No matter. Well, okay. Sorry. It depends whether you do for the for if you're doing like S duality or if you're doing Coulomb branches. If you're doing Coulomb branches, then well, example one. Then so uh, actually, uh, maybe let me say one thing. Example one, if you want to do the Coulomb branch, when uh, for for uh, M C G a point, then this should have this should be a Hamiltonian reduction of quotient bundle to G check with respect to now G check times G check because remember that the as the whole thing was just reduction. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, wow. sorry, I'm just rushing. So, uh, uh, so we should take the width of the reduction. Sorry, respect to G check, G check of the potential bundle. So, uh, uh, so the point is that the as the whole thing was the uh, 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 was the reduction with respect to just one copy of G check. But now to go from this dual thing to the Coulomb branch, you have to do it again, so somehow we get this thing, and so and and th and this is the and this this is just pure gauge theory, and this and this this, this is how the Coulomb branch for the pure gauge theory looks like. Just doing Neumann and non. Yes, uh, and, and if you do the S dual, then this is uh, then I mean this is the I mean this is an algebraic way of of describing what uh, the non ball actually. Yes. And the boundary condition is uh, this for the Dirichlet boundary condition. Ah, no, 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 yes, yes. The boundary condition for the point is no, no. Just words. Uh, okay. So again, I said that we have a lot of examples, but they have a very strange way. So that means that so when you have something which behaves in a strange way, it means that you, you can't expect an easy construction. So the construction which go from some kind of uh, less elementary terms. So suppose so. So now I have to. Uh, if, uh, I want to talk about defining the fine of G. This is also G of K mod G of O, where K is the field of one of one of is here is an O with this ring of integers, and uh, so this is kind of infinite dimensional space. So, but it's kind of a relatively nice infinite dimensional space. So this is. Uh, 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 this is a uh, uh, union of inductive limit of uh, projective varieties. And uh, that allows you to talk about constructible sheaves on, on the space. And in particular, I want to consider the following object, I want to consider the derived category of these sheaves. Uh, 
which are equivalent again with respect to left action of GFO. Now the point is that kind of it's a safe thing to do, although things are slightly infinite dimensional, because orbits of GFO are finite dimensional, and those projective varieties are exactly closures of GFO orbits. So you can formally write it as derived category of G of K more G of all, more G of all on the left and on the right. So it's derived category of the category stack. So here, again, I actually want to see the unbounded derived category, so I have to be a little bit careful about how you define it and somehow, well, let me not uh, go into these details for, for the purposes of this talk. But uh, uh, um, you, uh, uh, one thing that you can actually do in community general somehow, trying to have some, say, an algebraic group and a subgroup, if you can see the derived category of a double coaction, this has a monoidal structure, given by convolution. So that's like kind of baby example of a situation is, uh, is uh, baby analogy, I would say. If you have a finite group and a subgroup, we can see the, you can see the functions on the, on the group which are invariant with respect to the subgroup on the left and on the right, and they form a natural associative algebra. And so this thing forms a natural monoidal category, which in this case uh, turns out that we, it's not a general feature, but a special feature of this example. This is a symmetric monoidal category. I mean, symmetric and special feature of this example. Uh, Sorry? Braided. Sorry, I didn't. Braided. It's, this case, in this case, it's symmetric. Uh, I mean, again, this is not, it's not automatic as a special feature. Of, I mean, a feature, special feature of this story. And actually, inside here, you have, well, this is some kind of triangulated category. Inside here, we have a category of perverse sheaves, which is geophobic equivalent, which is abelian, and which, again, in general, if you consider such category of perverse sheaves, it's not, it's not, it will not be closed under the monoidal structure, but in this case, you're lucky, and it is. So this is also, uh, this is also a symmetric monoidal category. And let me tell you this category can actually be described explicitly. Mm -hmm. And so let me briefly tell you what the answer is, and, and from that I will immediately be able to construct those as dual guys. So uh, theorem uh, says the following. Well, theorem, which is kind of pretty well known, is what is this category of perverse sheaves? This is this is non-derived geometric stack, and uh, this category is canonical within the representations of the group in chain. That's kind of the easy part of the theorem. Slightly less easy part of the theorem is what is how to describe the derived category. And here again. There are actually slight, several slightly different variants of what you can mean by derived category. So, for one of them, what I'm saying will be true. Uh, 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 so, this is the following thing. Uh, let's consider symmetric algebra of G check shifted by negative 2. So, so, in other words, I put it in homological degree plus 2, and I think about this as a DG algebra with a trivial differential. And then I take modules over this, and by modules I mean DG modules, so I take the derived category of DG modules over this DG algebra. Again, DG algebra is pretty, pretty stupid, it just has zero differential, but DG modules can already be non-trivial, uh, which are also G-check equivalent, which just means that they are endowed with, with an action of G-check, which is compatible with G-check action of the algebra. And so this thing, this thing. Uh, you might wonder how, on this language, how to, how to, uh, this category sits inside this one, so how to, how to uh, describe this, uh, this embedding on this side, and so I won't tell you, but we'll leave it, because I don't have time, but I will leave it for as an exercise. And three, I think that you can also consider slightly enhanced variant, 
there's an action, there's an additional action on C star in the fine grass minor, which is called the loop rotation, which sort of which sort of rotates the variable t. And so if we consider this thing, then the story is going to be similar. Uh, uh, but you have to quantize the story. So over u h bar of g check. So what's u h bar of g check? So this is h bar is some additional variable which is going to have homological degree two. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's an algebra which is generated by elements x in g, g check with the condition that x y minus y x is equal to h bar times the commutator of x y. So that's again a graded algebra. I can see that the DG algebra with uh, uh, trivial differential. Uh, uh, okay, I have to stop in like three minutes. Uh, so, uh, so this is the description. Now, uh, now let's play the following game. So, try to actually finish in three minutes. So now I'm going to give you a construction of this this dual thing. So uh, now suppose that you have A inside this category. Which is a ring object. Anytime I have a monoid uh, ring object, let's say comm commutative associative. Anytime I have a symmetric monoidal category, uh, now for I actually should say that I mean if you can say actually derived category is symmetric monoidal for people who sort of know about uh, you know the G uh, uh, you know. They say derived algebraic geometry. If you, if you can see the point DG category, it's actually E3 category. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's E3, but not E4. But, let me, but again, just, just symmetric monoidal will be enough for my purposes. If you can just consider the, the corresponding derived category. So, so suppose you have symmetric. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so let's call this equivalence, let's call this function five. I don't have time to explain how it's constructed, but this is, this is a geometric lambda. So this is a. No thing. So then, the point is that let's consider the five A. Yeah. One thing I should have said is that uh, what is this uh, monoidal structure here? So monoidal structure on this side. This is just the usual tensor product over this symmetric algebra. Nothing fancy. So this five A is going to be a, a commutative associative ring over. Uh, well, and again, right now, let, let's ignore the homological uh, grading completely. Well, I mean, if you want, let's consider the cohomology of this. Uh, this commutative associative ring over the symmetric algebra. Again, let's forget about the grading. And the grading will actually be responsible for the fact that eventually I will have C star action on something. Uh, 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 commutative associative ring over this. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, if a is also C star equivariant. Uh, sorry, ring over this with G check action. Uh, then uh, this, uh, because of number three, this five A uh, gets endowed with a deformation, not a mutual deformation. Or quantization uh, over C of H star. So, so it's quantization. And in particular, phi of A itself phi uh, uh, of A itself uh, uh, gets a Poisson structure. And you can actually see that this uh, embedding of sin G check of, well, it's not maybe an embedding, just a map, is the moment map for this. OK, I'm slightly over time, so I'll need maybe uh, two more minutes to finish. So I'll say that, so the slogan is, anytime you have a ring object in this derived Sataki category, you can construct uh, 
a Hamilton, well, what you get actually is in the fine Hamiltonian G check space. So, so the last thing to say is, uh, so remember that we started with G and X, how that should G and X, we should be able to associate some ring object in this derived set I category. So if I'm allowed to have two more minus, I can describe that. Can I? We're not canceling Russian culture. We go forever. Uh, no, I mean, I can either stop here, or I can take two more minutes and describe the answer. But this is half of the chair. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So, uh, we'll subtract it from your, another talk of yours later. Sorry. Subtract it from what? You'll give another talk at some other time and there we'll subtract it. Okay. <laughs> Deal. Uh, so, right, so. So now given G and X, and X before I just say smooth if I'm right with G action, I want to consider uh, uh, I want to consider some, I want to define some space R of X which leaves over the fine Grassmannian with a map pi. So I want to associate some space to this. And then it will be have, have the property that if I take the direct image of the dualizing shape of the space. Again, things are slightly interdimensional, but if X, is, uh, uh, if X is smooth, then there won't be a problem to define this dualizing shape. This will be a, uh, this will be a ring object in this direction category. And uh, to describe this R of X, I, let me, well, I, I can do this please in group theoretic terms, but let me, let me do it in sort of moduli terms. Uh, so you can actually, one way to think about the fine Grassmannian is to say that this is a space of classifying the following data, uh, let's say P, which is a G bundle on the formal disk D, which is just spec of O, and alpha, which is a trivialization of P restricted to D star, where D star is the formal puncture disk, and D star is just spec of K. So this is, uh, this is what the fine Grassmannian is. And so what is R of X? R of X uh, is the space of triples. So it's P, kappa, and let's say maybe S. Uh, so it's triples. So P and kappa are as before. And what is S? S is a section of, uh, this is, let me say like this, with X valued. Well, okay, let me say it's section of the corresponding associated bundle of P sub X bundle to X. And so it's not just any on D, on the, on the disk, and it's not just any section, but I want to use this kappa. And so, you see, if I have the section on, on the disk, automatically I get section of a trivial bundle on the disk, on the, on the puncture disk, because on the puncture disk my, bundle, my, my P is trivialized. So I want that to extend to uh, an actual regular section of trivial bundle everywhere, such that, let me write like this, S has no pole with respect to kappa, i.e. S is a section, is also a section of uh, the trivial bundle which is just uh, d times x, uh, p0 x, which is just a Okay, now I'll stop. So, well, I don't have time to sort of explain this, but the idea is that you can construct this variety of triples, and you can, take, you can, you can make sense out of its dualizing shift, although things are slightly infinite dimensional. You can push it forward to the fine Grassmannian, and that turns out to be, a, that naturally is endowed with a ring object structure, and then you apply this derived geometric set like a functor, and this is the, and, and this is your, and, this is, and you get the algebra of functions on your S dual variety. And then you have a bunch of theorems, which you can actually have actually many more theorems of this type that, but in particular, if you look at all the examples I talked about in the beginning, then if you apply this construction, you get exactly the answer I described. But also, for instance, this gives a definition of small variety varieties in general and, and, and
lots of lots of, of other examples. Most of those you can describe in elementary terms. Now, every time you can, you actually have to prove a theorem that you know the elementary description is compatible with this description. But uh, in most in normal cases, this has been confirmed. Okay. Thank you, and sorry for going over time. All right.